The public hearings by the Commission of Inquiry into Land Matters entered the third day. We fought Porto Municipality MP Alessi Ruhunda, making a presentation on behalf of others. Ruhunda, who came with a document, authored by an elder and senior opinion leader, Professor Edward Rugumayo, led a team from the Association of the Elder in Toro to present their petition on the land management in Toro region. They claim that Toro Queen Mother Beske Migisha is involved in land grabbing and massive eviction of the kingdom subjects. Evictions have been masterminded by the Toro Kingdom Queen Mother Beske Migisha, especially in the villages of Chitumba and Georgia, located in and around Fort Porto municipality. The aide the Professor Rugumayo was unable to appear in person due to ill health. The Queen Mother allegedly uses royal guards and security personnel to intimidate and drive people out of their bona fide land. Demonstrably, in 2003, the Queen Mother, aided by armed security agencies and without any court order, conducted a series of land grabbing and forceful evictions. The 70 member commission also heard that Kemigisha had sold off the Toro Kingdom royal burial grounds. In total disregard of Toro Kingdom and institutions are alleged to have been sold by the Toro Kingdom Queen Mother to several parties land at Kagoma and Vorongo, which serve as royal burial sites. In 2008, the Queen Mother sold about 9,000 hectares of land to government at 4.5 billion Uganda shillings. The land had bona fide squatters who have reportedly not been compensated to date. From the Queen Mother, in her capacity as the registered administrator of the estate of the late King of Toro Kingdom. The land purchased is located in Kibito sub-county in Bunyangavu, county of Kavarole district. The Queen Mother is expected to appear before the commission to explain herself. The MP and his team also claim that officials from the Prime Minister's office, who they did not name, had allocated themselves land meant for hosting refugees in Ichaka. It is alleged that government officials, especially from the office of the Prime Minister, have allocated themselves large pieces of land under the guise of settling refugees. The veteran journalist Robert Karundi Serumaga, who is now a special advisor to the Kabako of Uganda, also interfaced with the commission. He urged the probe team to recommend to government to abandon the idea of seeking compulsory acquisition of private land. He said attempts by government to amend Article 26.2 of the Constitution that empowers citizens to own land could spark off a genocide. That does not take into account the aspirations of the people and their culture. Ultimately, is tantamount to genocide. Okay, you cannot develop people by force. He warned that such attempts could cause even more poverty among the people. He also advised government to abandon the liberalisation policy, which he says was forced on Uganda by the Western powers. The NRM's liberalisation stroke foreign investor strategy was also equally doomed from the outset because it was based on the same unreliable and collapsing global economic system. He attributes the current financial crisis on liberalization that led to the sale of Uganda Commercial Bank. Serumaga argued that this led to the collapse of the middle class that can no longer access credit. We made a bad plan. The NRM plan was a bad plan to think you're going to sell to an economy that keeps on collapsing. He traced the land problem in Uganda to the Anglican Bishop Taka, who was used by the colonial regimes to partition land in Uganda. He was very, very insistent that the, much as we are sitting down to discuss how to reorganize power here in Uganda, the heads of the entire clan system will not be allowed to attend these meetings. He called the entire clan system of Uganda satanic. He proposed that whoever grabbed the government land should be forced to return it. Jingo Francis, NTV.